Hey guys, it's PB. I was in a car accident today. And it's New Year's Eve. Who gets in a car accident on New Year's Eve? This guy. That's who. Now my back's all gimped up. I feel like I got hit by a car. Oh wait, you hit the car. Let's not get into specifics here. Anyways, it's New Year's Eve. I'm sitting here on Chrissy's couch. And Chrissy's making a bunch of goodies for us to eat, which includes barbecue, bacon, chicken, pizza. Shrimp rang. Shrimp rang. Um, hot wings. Hot wings. Wings that are not cold. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. But um, there's some important things I want to talk to y'all about, but we're not going to talk about it right now. I'll finish this up tomorrow at my office. But for now, I hope y'all are having a wonderful, happy New Year Eve celebration. And not getting in car accidents. And not getting in car accidents. All right, see y'all tomorrow. 10 years ago on New Year's Eve, I was on a stage in front of like 200 kids playing heavy metal music. Things were crazy. It was all about partying it up. Happy New Year. Everybody's happy. Happy, happy, happy. Now things are a lot different. Cause I've gotten old. Yeah. Is it midnight yet? No, it's like I'm so sleepy. Okay, guys. I hope everybody was safe and secure on New Year's Eve. We don't want any problems, any wrecks, anything like that. Like I told you, I was in a car accident yesterday. Back hurts, I'm sore. When you're traveling at a, any rate of speed and you hit something, it causes damage to your vehicle. Your body gets jolted, it causes damage to your body. So I'm a little bit sore. Being in a car accident got me thinking, you know, sometimes things happen it's that's why they call them accidents you know I was going down the road and I was doing everything that I could do that was right and I was reacting in the right way I was driving properly I had my seatbelt on I was following the laws I was slowing down the way I should have been something distracted me from what I was doing a light hit me in the eye. I was blinded a little bit from this light. And as I'm reaching over and putting the visor down, I hit the car in front of me. It's not really that bad. It wasn't a terrible accident. I was doing everything that I knew that was right. But sometimes accidents still happen. You know, it's a new year, so we put the old things behind us. We look forward to a new year. There's a place in the book of Judges, two places actually, in chapter 17 and in chapter 21, where it says, Israel had no king, and everyone did what was good in their own eyes. Now in this day and age, in this country, we got a lot of people who have no guidance. There's a lot of people who do what's right according to their own eyes. People who think it's okay to do something, think it's loving to allow someone to do something or allow this to happen, allow that to happen. And it seems like the right thing to do. So since they have nothing telling them anything otherwise, they go with it. And what has happened is because of that, the Bible, which is the truth, the one thing that we can rely on 
and say, this is solid truth. This is right. We not only have what the Bible calls wrong happening on a daily basis in our country, but people are going around saying, well, what the Bible calls wrong, we see is right. So we're gonna call it right and we're gonna do it. For instance, not only sex before marriage, but living together before marriage. Acting like you're married when you're not. That is a sin according to this book, the Holy Bible. That's wrong. Human minds just see it as something right. People don't even get married anymore. They just live together. The only reason people get married a lot of the times is just for insurance reasons or because their car insurance will be cheaper. We see where nowadays it's perfectly fine for two men to get married or two women to get married while this book tells us it's wrong. While they see it as right because they don't think it's right to take away somebody's freedoms, we see it as wrong because the Bible tells us it's wrong. We live in a country who has no guidance system. We live in a country who does what is right in their own eyes. They don't do what's right according to a book, a moral book that was written by the creator of the universe. So if a 35 year old man thinks it's okay for two people who are unmarried to be living together and sleeping together, his 35 years of wisdom versus eternal wisdom from the God of the universe. Seems like we should be listening to this book a lot more. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, Israel had been a nation under theocracy, under God. They didn't have a king. This didn't work very well for the Israelites because the Israelites didn't see something tangible in, th in front of them. They wanted a beautiful, handsome, good-looking, awesome, rich king. So that's what they asked for. And God says, you really don't want a king. Because while a king is ready for battle and goes galloping through the city, he's sending your sons out to die in that battle, not himself. And while a king is rich and has all this money and all this wealth and makes the whole country look good, he's getting his wealth and his money from taxes, which means you're giving him the wealth and the money. What do you need that for when you got a God who has his own wealth, his own money, who will fight your battles for you, and all you gotta do is listen to him. So the Israelites say, we still want a king. And so God says, fine, you want a king? I'll give you a king. And what ends up happening is we start to see where kings, while being rich and having wealth and being these awesome, good-looking people that we look up to, that's all they are, people. They're not God. They can't really do anything awesome for us. All they're really doing is using our kids to fight their battles and using the money we pay in taxes to make themselves richer. So what God ends up doing is through this awesome layout of things, he ends up putting his son in the womb of Mary, who is a descendant of David. And because Jesus is born, all of a sudden, he's the king of the Jews. The real king of the Jews is a descendant of David, and that is Jesus Christ, whom, while he is also born of Mary, who is a descendant of David, he is also the son of God. God reestablishes himself 
as the ruler of Israel. Really getting places, PB. What's the deal? What are you getting at? Well, my question is, who's the king in your life? Who's in your driver's seat? If, if God had been driving the vehicle I was driving, I wouldn't have gotten in a car accident yesterday. Maybe your New Year's resolution. How about we stop doing what seems right in our own eyes and start doing what God would want us to do. Let's stop being king of our own lives, jump out of the driver's seat, and put God in the driver's seat. Make God king of our lives. Make God the ultimate authority over all that you do. Because if God's the one making your decisions, do you really got anything to worry about? All right, guys, this is PB. I'm out. I'm all up in your face. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Monkey butts. <laughs> Beef jerky. Happy New Year. Bye. Happy New Year.